Thank you. Thank you. That's very nice. Thank you. Well, it's the 90s, and like unsafe sex, marriage is back in style. But what happens when Mr. Dream turns out to be Daddy's Nightmare? Sue's about to find out. Incidentally, Sue's not her real name, but a definite improvement nonetheless. Uh, Sue, you are very much in love with Guy, is that correct? And you're engaged to Guy. Very much so. And, uh, in fact, my staff tells me that uh, this guy, Guy, sounds like the perfect guy. <laughs> So, uh, where did you meet Prince Charming? We met at a rally for saving Wales. A worthy cause. For those of you who don't know, uh, Wales is a small country inside England. Um, it's contributed so many great entertainers to our culture. In fact, Miller, isn't Tom Jones Walish? Yeah, and uh, who's the guy who played uh, Sean Connery in the 007 movies? Who is that? Uh, uh, James Bond. James Bond, James Bond, right. <laughs> okay, saving Wales, a great cause, but a different show nonetheless. Uh, so you're at this rally. How did you meet God? Well, I was standing on this platform and I was listening to all the speeches when suddenly it falls. Uh -huh. And next thing I know, there's just blood everywhere. <laughs> Come on, Sue, not the old help me on hemorrhaging trick. <laughs> no, I actually broke my arm. Oh, and? Well, Guy was right next to me and he quickly said it and he put it in a cast. So, <laughs> so Guy's a doctor? Well, no, he's just a gentleman with a really good first aid kit. Oh. Okay, so he set your arm. Uh, what happens next? <laughs> Something right out of a fairy tale. Oh. You two went home together and had sex. <laughs> no, we decided wait. Of course, you had dinner <laughs> first. <laughs> no, actually, we waited till our third date. But it was worth it, because sex with Guy was... Do you remember Kathleen Turner and William Hurt in Body Heat? <laughs> Are you kidding? Do you know how much freeze framing I've done on that video? <laughs> well, uh, tell me more about Guy. I want to hear some more about Guy. Well, <laughs> he's a successful stockbroker. He's a great dancer. He's uh, very affectionate, warm and caring. Mm -hmm. And he has a great sense of humor. But it's never at anybody else's expense. So what's the deal, Sue? This guy sounds perfect. Well, there is a teensy weensy problem. <laughs> Well, that's good. Otherwise, I wouldn't have a show. <laughs> All right, audience, you want to meet Guy? Yeah. <laughs> Come on out, Guy! <laughs> so, um, what's the problem? <laughs> forgive me, forgive me, I made some laughter. Um, well, welcome to the show, Guy. Actually, Dick, when I'm dressed like this, I prefer the name Gail. Well, I like that name, too. So, uh, Guy Gail, um, <laughs> sitting watching you like this, you don't seem like all those Puerto Rican transvestites we see in bad sections of town or on Springer. Well, <laughs> that's because those are drag queens stick. I'm straight. I'm just a heterosexual cross-dresser. <laughs> but uh, not all the time, because we have a picture of you dressed as a guy. Don't we, Miller? Can you put that on the screen? Oh, very nice. You're a good-looking guy, uh, guy. <laughs> why, why all this feminine apparel? Could we consider this a form of vagina envy? <laughs> not at all, Dick. I'm not a transsexual. I, I love being a man. Mm -hmm. I intend to keep my organ intact. Now, I don't I'm mean not... to cut you off there, but uh, <laughs> all people know people. People. Uh, Sue, how do your parents feel about God? My mother's dead. I'm sorry, was it serious? <laughs> it was a prolonged illness. Well, at least she didn't suffer. Uh, and, and what about your dad? How does he feel about this? Well, actually, he doesn't know. But he's about to find out. Because he's backstage in our green room right now. He thinks he's here for one of our My Daughter the Matchmaker shows. How will he react? We'll find out right after this. Are you a Nazi skinhead who's been abducted by an alien? Then maybe you should call Jerry Springer. 
Thank you, we're back. Tonight's topic, can't help loving that she-man of mine. With us are Sue and uh, her fiancé, Guy Gale. Could you put your legs together, do you mind? Sharon Stone, you're not. <laughs> yeah, here's a question for the panel. Yeah. Uh, yes, this is for the man who looks like Joan Crawford. That would be Guy Gale. Yes. Um, when you're getting ready to go out and you're trying to look as much like a woman as possible, mm -hmm. how do you pack your luggage? <laughs> pack my luggage? That's yeah. a very good question. That's a very good question. Come on, I mean, what guy in this room hasn't at one time in their life stood in front of the mirror and played the old pushback game? You know what I mean? <laughs> There's one right there. I think a few of us have, haven't we? Okay. Now, we're going to meet Sue's, uh, your dad, in just a second, but uh, uh, tell us a little bit about him. What does he do? He's a pipe fitter. <laughs> but uh, what's his job? <laughs> oh, people, no. No, please. Well, that, that is his job. Fair enough. Okay, now I've got to ask you, I've got to ask you, Sue, why are you telling your dad now, here on national TV, instead of in the privacy of your own home? Well, I just figured that my dad would be less likely to kill Guy if we were in front of a national audience. <laughs> well, up until recently, that would be true. Uh, but uh, uh, let's go get Sue's... You want to get, get the dad right now, folks? Yeah! Uh, now, I'm going to walk that stage. I'm going to get him. Just remember, he thinks he's here because he's going to be set up on a date by Sue, okay? He doesn't know that his future son-in-law has a taste for chiffon. And I don't mean margarine. <laughs> you put a little flux on that copper pipe that ought to take... Oh, hi, Tim. Hi. How you doing? Uh, nice to see you. Welcome to the show. Thank you. How you feeling? Are you, are you, uh, are you nervous? Uh, well, uh, yeah, actually, I am a little nervous. Uh, I haven't been on a date since uh, my wife died. Yeah, I heard about your wife. I'm glad she went quickly. Um, <laughs> come on out this way. <clears throat> Ready? Oh, we... How's my breath? <laughs> oh, it sounds pretty good from here. Okay. Let's come on right through here. How about a hand for Bob? Have a seat there next to your daughter and her friend. Hi. Uh, yeah. Hi, Daddy. Woohoo! Not bad, honey. <laughs> oh. Ooh, Daddy. Well, well, Bob, that gal over there is your future son-in-law, Guy. <laughs> Guy? Hi, Dad. That's right, Bob, because our show today is about men who like to dress up as women. Wait, you, you mean he's a cross-vestite? Bingo. I think I'm going to be sick. Miller! I understand. Oh, Daddy. Oh, Daddy. Oh, Daddy. Oh. Thank you very much. You gonna be okay? <laughs> Dad. Sure, I'll no. be okay. No, I'm not gonna be okay. I mean, why would I be okay? The man, my woman, my mother wants to marry is a freak. Come on, Bob. You've known me now for over a year. Do I do I look like a freak to you? <laughs> Bob, Bob, come on. We're living in an age of new diversity, and people are much more giving and more tolerant. Wouldn't you yeah. agree? I'm with Bob. I'd like to kick this freak's ass. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't in heat. Well, that's another way of going. Thank you very much. See, guys like us, we didn't raise our daughters to be with no sissy boy candy ass fruitcakes like this thing over here. Oh, Come God, on, so Bob. glad your mother's not here to see this. Bob, 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 but what isn't what he's doing harmless? I mean, a guy puts on a woman's dress. Haven't you at one time in your life stood in front of the mirror and played the old pushback game? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, Bob? Well, apparently not. <laughs> it looks like Bob's going to be a tough sale. Will Guy always be the bridesmaid and never the groom? We'll find out when we come back.
Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back. We're talking to Bob, Sue, and Guy Gale, and we're trying to figure out who's going to wear the panties in the family. Well, here to help us figure out this mess is the author of the book, When Your Wife's a Princess and You're a Queen. Please welcome relationship expert, Matty Gelman. Maddie, welcome. Glad you could make it. I'd swallow bleach for you, Dick. <laughs> well, maybe another show. <laughs> You've been backstage listening. What are your thoughts so far? Well, Dick, first of all, Guy has two problems. Number one, he's a transvestite. Number two, that dress. You look like an after-dinner mint with pump. <laughs> now, as for Bob, yeah. Bob, 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 my heart's out to you. You're losing a daughter. But... You're also gaining a daughter. Wait, wait, wait a minute. He's a man wearing women's clothes. Don't you find that a little unnatural? Bob, many famous men in history have enjoyed wearing women's clothing. Caligula, J. Edgar Hoover. Janet Reno. <laughs> Dick, Dick, you fillet me. <laughs> Where I come from, if it looks like a duck, walks like a duck and acts like a duck, it's a fag. <laughs> Bob. Bob, Bob, Bob. Ix, Ixnay on the egg they talk, okay? Bob, I get the feeling that there is another issue here, that you're hiding something. Hiding? What do you mean, hiding? I'm not hiding anything. Come on, Bob, what about it? Do you have some latent, other than heterosexual experience that you can share with us? No. Bob, Bob, no. Bob, no. Bob, no. Bob, no. Not really. <laughs> all right, all right. Up here. Yeah. Yeah. You see, Dick, when I was young, I served in a little place I like to call Vietnam. I like to call it that, too, Bob. <laughs> well, there was this uh, one night I was in this bar, see? Yeah. And I picked up what uh, I think is a very cute little Vietnamese bar girl. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know how it is. Things happen. But when I went down for the chow mein, <laughs> I came up with an egg roll. You know what I mean? <laughs> If you're worried about Guy being gay, believe me, he isn't. I mean, nobody could do what he does for as long as he does, for as many times as he does, and not be straight. <laughs> Bob, Bob, I think I can ease your fears by giving Guy a simple word association test. Word association? Yes. I say a word, and you say the first word that pops into your head. Like, I would say black. You would say white. I would say dog. You would say... White dog. <laughs> I know this game. It's password. No. Dick, Dick, wait. Just give me a minute here. This test will identify any homosexual tendency. Okay, Guy, now say the first thing that pops into your brain. Football. Bears. Steak. Beer. KY. Kentucky. Straight as an arrow. All right. <laughs> Oh, yeah? Well, here's my test. You wear a dress, you're a pervert, period, and I don't want you for a son-in-law. Uh, oh, boy, Maddie, as a professional, I don't know how you're going to deal with a bullheaded Joe like Bob. Well, Dick, I would have Bob do some role-playing. I would have him assume the role of a transvestite to walk a mile in Guy's heels, so to speak. <laughs> Interesting. Ooh. So you'd have Bob dress up as a man dressing up as a woman. Bob, what do you say? Oh, no, are you kidding? Uh -huh. oh, no way. Come on, come on audience, what do you say? I know I'd do anything in the world for you almost, but put on a dress. I can't do that. Can't. Audience, let's try it again, huh? Bob, 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 
you're not going to make me look silly, are you? <laughs> of course not. When we come back, we're going to see how Bob looks in four-inch heels and a teddy. <laughs> and a special visitor from somebody's past. Don't go away. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back to our show. Now, remember, in an attempt to be more understanding of his daughter's transvestite fiancé, Bob has agreed to wear some female garments, and he's being helped backstage by our relationship expert, Maddie Gelman. Maddie, how's he doing? He's just putting on his underwear. <laughs> well, hello, Kareem. <laughs> I think it's time to see Bob. Folks, you want to see him? women's underwear, do you feel like a criminal, a misfit, or a freak? Well, I guess it's not so bad. I mean, I don't miss the chafing. You look great. Don't you think so, Dick? Oh, oh he's a sight. All right. Uh... No, no, Dick! Yeah, yeah. You have a question? Yeah. yeah I what's the freaking point to all this? Uh, good question, Maddie. What's the freaking point to all this? <laughs> The point is to show Bob that even though he's wearing a teddy, he's still the same man inside. <laughs> you see that, don't you? Yeah, I guess so. Well, <laughs> Maddie makes a good point. So, uh, Bob, now, are you ready to allow Guy to marry your daughter, huh? Oh, no way. Wait a minute. I love my daughter, but, uh, no, I don't know about Audience, that. what do you say? Should I... Come on, what do you say? so I can tell her. Where is she? Well, I think you'll know by the sound of this public domain music. <laughs> Wait a minute, you mean you're going to get married now? Well, that's right. <laughs> okay, Maddie, here come the bride and bride. Don't they make a lovely couple? I think I'm about to submit. Well, you should have thought about that during the break. <laughs> you kill me. You are my boy toy. Oh. Uh, Bob, you look very emotional. Like you're about to start to cry. He can put this thong underwear on backwards. <laughs> okay, now the Reverend Maddie will administer the vows as written by Maddie and her sister Golda. Sue, you see this guy, this guy's in love with me. Guy, you see your Sue. Now take her hand and say, I do. Maddie, it's a wedding on a tribute to Burke Backrack. Now, if anybody has any objection, speak now or forever... Hey! Hey! Uh-oh, it sounds like we have a comment from an old friend of the yeah. groom bride. Uh -huh. He can't marry her. Whoa, it sounds like you know God. Oh, yes, I should. He's my husband. Wait a second, ma'am. Are you trying to tell me Guy's the one who deserted you and your two children three and a half years ago? Yeah, that's right. You're married I... with children. Yes, that's right, too. <gasps> Judy and Guy Jr. What the hell's going on here? What a complete don't surprise. Crazy. But I think we have a picture of them, don't we, Miller? <laughs> oh, my God, he's a bigamist. How could you do this to me? I, I guess it just slipped my mind. <laughs> she wouldn't grant me the divorce. We, we had grown way apart. Ooh. And come on, honey, you've got to understand Ooh. this. You, you understand, don't you, you Dad? Daddy, get a break to me. Yeah. Honey, you lied to my little girl. Uh, you abandon your wife and kids. You run around wearing women's dresses. I'm going to break every leg you've got. Oh, hold it, mister, yeah. hold it, mister. Nobody's breaking any legs tonight. Not until I do my wrap-up. <laughs> well, they say there are no more creative talk shows left. But tonight, we had a talk show first. A transvestite bigamist. Eat your heart out, Springer. <laughs> For now, I'm Dick Dietrich. See you soon. 
Well, go for it, Tom.